What is up guys, Coach Joe Garage, De La Swole. The video is gonna be a little bit different in the fact that I'm not gonna do the entire training session. I'm just gonna do my first movement, which is gonna be a block pull. I'm gonna talk about why I'm doing block pulls, why you should be doing block pulls, how to incorporate them into your programming, why I like block pulls over rack pulls. Uh, and it'll be a shorter video, but more informative. I used to do a lot of these, you know, scripted uh, tutorial videos and informational videos, but I wanna do the same thing, just in a vlog format. So you guys are gonna watch me start warming up. I'll be talking throughout the session. Hopefully you'll learn some things, use it for your programming, and we'll have a good one. All right, so what you guys are seeing right now are gonna be the warm-ups all the way up to my heaviest set. Now, prior to this, I did do some other warm-up drills and I'll put a video or playlist above that you can try depending on how your body's feeling. Typically, if I need more time to warm up, I'll do one of the videos that's above. If not, sometimes I just warm up with a barbell and then gradually work up in weight. Uh, but feeling a little bit stiff, it's pretty cold and windy outside today, which just takes a little bit longer for me to warm up when I have days like that. So watch the videos. Here's the setup we're running with guys. A little bit janky, but we got to do with what we got. So since the garage is a little bit angled, the bar is typically going to roll forward. So to stop that, I just have a sandbag there. And on the other side, I just have a slam ball. Uh, but these blocks are actually from Ursinus College, which is pretty cool. So a guy I knew, he was a strength condition coach at Ursinus. They were getting rid of a ton of stuff, kind of clearing house on their weight room. So I was able to pick those up. Uh, so this is the setup I'm rolling with. Uh, you guys could use bumper plates. You could use better blocks than I have. You could also use something like wagon wheels, which I have right here. So it all depends on what height you're looking for, but we have the Titan wagon wheels. We also have the Rogue uh, wagon wheels that you guys would be able to use depending on the height. And I'll talk more about that as we get into it, but I just wanna show you how I'm setting it up and we'll continue on with the lifts. Now, as we're talking, I want you guys to think about this video in terms of strength for the deadlift, not hypertrophy. There's a lot of other ways to strengthen or grow the muscles in the posterior chain that I would recommend for hypertrophy versus strength training. So this is, I wanna increase my deadlift or areas in my deadlift and I would use block pulls to do that in this fashion. So one of the biggest things right off the bat is figuring out what height do you want to do your block pulls from. Now, typically when I look at my deadlift, I get stuck right around the knee area or sometimes even just below the knee. So I find that doing a block pull is gonna be beneficial because it's gonna help strengthen that position in my deadlift over time. So when I do go to pull heavy, I can easily get through that sticky point. Now, rule of thumb for me and what has worked best for the athletes that I coach is find that sticky point. So say it's gonna be right below your knee. Well, I actually wanna start the pull about an inch or two below that sticky point so that we're building the strength through that range of motion, not just starting there, if that makes sense. So for me, getting stuck right below the knee, I'm probably gonna put it mid shin or within an inch or two above mid shin so that I can really build that strength in that portion of the lift and then excel through it as we get heavier. Now, a side note, some of the athletes that I work with talk about their glutes needing to get stronger. Now, there are a lot of accessory exercises I'd recommend to isolate the glutes if that's something you want to get stronger to help transfer over to the lockout in the deadlift. However, the majority of people I find really benefit with a block pull somewhere between that mid shin to just below the knee level. Not to say that, you know, there aren't people that need to strengthen their glutes. Obviously, that's gonna help. Uh, but for the majority of the people that I've worked with and myself, I really find the best bang for my buck to be that mid shin or just below knee range to really help transfer over to increasing the overall strength of the deadlift. Now, one of the biggest questions I often get asked is why do a block pull over a rack pull? And to be honest with you, I've probably done rack pulls less than 10 times in my entire life where I've done block pulls, I wanna say probably 
over a hundred times uh, over my training career. And the reason for that is typically rack pulls can cause damage to the barbell. And we spend a lot of money with barbells, not to say that you can't use a junk or beater bar, uh, but at the same time, I've invested a lot of my barbells. I wanna keep them as healthy and as strong as possible. And what you'll find is they just get banged up really bad. They tend to bend or break, uh, which is one, not safe for you. And then two, also just a terrible waste of equipment. Another point about rack pulls is I find that it typically becomes an ego lift because people will just start the bar pretty high up above their knee and end up just loading as many plates on as possible to just get a really short range of motion. Now, not to say there's not a time and place for that, but at the same time, this is the majority of you guys who really wanna put the most amount of effort and be as efficient as possible when it comes to the deadlift. So I find that that block pull is gonna be better off for you and doing more block pulls than rack pulls. So when and how would I structure block pulls in my training program? Now, as you guys have watched my videos over a long period of time, or if you haven't, I highly recommend checking out the deadlift playlist where you can see how I program in deadlifts and their variations. I'm a higher frequency puller, meaning that typically I have my standard conventional or competition deadlift in the beginning of the week, and then I like to do another variation, maybe towards the middle or end of the week. Now, if we're constantly doing a regular deadlift, that can be very fatiguing. And on top of all the other training volume that we have going on, right, we're gonna be building systemic fatigue. So what I like doing is putting something like a block pull a couple days later in the week. And what this is gonna do is it still allow me to overload the movement pretty heavy. Uh, it's gonna help me work on weak points in that deadlift, but it's not gonna build systemic fatigue as if I was pulling conventional twice you know, during that week. Uh, and it's also just gonna save my legs a little bit and my back. Another reason that I like using block pulls is for pain management or working around some sort of injury. I found in the past when I have either a low back tweak or something going on that's an issue when I pull conventionally from the floor, if I just change that range of motion slightly, I'm able to still get that deadlift or hinge movement pattern in without having as much pain or no pain at all. So just play around with it. If you find that you have a tweak or an issue when you're pulling from the floor, play around with different ranges of motion or just play around with the intensity as well. So you're still gonna be doing a block pull. Maybe you're not going as heavy, but it's still better than nothing. So just a great way to work around injury or pain management and still allow you to get hinging or pulling volume in throughout your week. Lastly, you may be watching this video and you may say, hey, Coach Show, I'm not gonna be a power lifter or a strong man. I don't necessarily care so much about my deadlift. Why would I do these? Well, I think it is really great to still get some sort of hinging movement pattern in or some sort of pulling in. So it doesn't have to be that you have a specific goal for your deadlift or compete in strength sports. This is just a nice variation for you to get in to still use the same muscles involved with the posterior chain or a hinging or deadlifting movement pattern. So it is just great for anybody to do. And you can play around, like I said, with that range of motion, how heavy you wanna go, uh, but it's just an easy way to still ingrain it into your training. So that's pretty much it, guys. I still wanted to create this video, make it a little bit shorter to give you guys information, somewhat of a vlog style where you can see me doing the block pulls and then the rest of my training, uh, but it's not gonna be your typical 30, 40 minute training vlog that I've been putting out. So if you guys like it, make sure you comment down below, subscribe to the channel, check out the links in the description to help support the channel. Absolutely means the world to me and you guys are fantastic. So until then, guys, stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine. And I'll catch up with you next time. Peace.